So I need to talk about the strum limit for a second. In the early Guitar Hero and Rock Band games, there was this mechanic known as the strum limit, which ended up making fast drumming a lot harder than a lot of the later games. Guitar Hero stopped using the strum limit mechanic right when Guitar Hero 3 came out, and Rock Band stopped using the strum limit mechanic when RB3 came out. The strum limit is essentially how many notes the game allows you to hit before it becomes impossible. And the way the game does this is by making you have a 52 millisecond check. So every time you down strum, you have to wait 52 milliseconds before you can up strum, meaning you have to strum very accurately. On slower strumming sections, it's a lot easier because the notes don't go past the limit. But when you take songs like Ties That Bind, Rock Door, Greengrass and High Tides, fast strumming sections, you have to be a lot more precise, because the game's still checking for that 52 millisecond check each time you up and down strum. So the closer it is to the strum limit, the more precise you have to be. And this changes throughout the game's frame rate. On NTSC, you can strum roughly 15 notes per second, and on PAL, you can strum roughly 16.67 notes per second. Which is why the first ever Greengrass and High Tides FC was done on PAL 360. Because the strumming in itself is 15 notes per second, and on PAL, since you can strum 16.67 notes per second, it became a lot easier to actually hit in a run. But on NTSC, pretty much have to hit every note perfectly, because the notes per second is right at the strum limit. On Rock Band 1, if you start it off early enough, you can get a little bit more leeway and have a little bit more time for human error. But on games like GH1, you can't really start off early. I've FC'd both sections on Guitar Hero 1 and Rock Band 1. And I have to say, Guitar Hero 1 is really, really hard. <laughs> because the orange note before that's a strum, and you have to hit these notes accurately, so you can't do a quick double strum. And since 2 is right at the strum limit, you pretty much have to hit it perfectly. But when you speed up the song, something interesting happens to the strum limit. I'm not sure exactly on the specific specifics, but since the strum limit is tied to the frame rate, the strum limit will actually widen, but the hit window will also shrink, so that's the drawback. This was the reason why I was able to FC Texas Flood 125, V-Control 125, and Greengrass Solo 2E at 110% speed on NTSC. Don't want to get too much into the strum limit in this video, because I have another documentary planned where I want to talk about the story of the removal of the strum limit and how community members got past the strum limit by modifying the game's engine. That's going to be my next big video project. Project after the $100 bounty video, which I'm 70% finished with that. But now that you know what the strum limit actually is, why am I mentioning it? So just recently, a dash launch plugin was found by 760 Creations that allows you to actually play on console with an Arduino guitar, which is already nice for the fact that if you have a really nice modded guitar, you're able to play with it on console. But besides that fact, Arduinos allow you to change the polling rate. Now on console, this doesn't seem like a big deal, because you're still hitting stuff at 60, right? But for some reason, a lot of the Rock Band games get affected by this. Guitar Hero 2 and 3 don't really get affected by this, and I saw no virtual difference between the two, but I know for a fact that it affects Rock Band 1, and let me tell you why. So my first 2 EFC was done on a stock Explorer, and it took me over 3 hours just to hit it once. Regular guitar controllers have a polling rate of about 8, which means that the controller information you're trying to register has to be a lot more precise than if the polling rate was 0. This is huge, because sections like 2E become a lot more reasonable than if you're doing it with a stock controller, and it is possible with a stock explorer. I almost got past 2E strumming in a run with the stock explorer, although I missed before, and I've hit solo 2E multiple times on stock controllers. But with the Arduino's polling rate, the controller has a lot more processing power for your inputs to register a lot easier, and a lot quicker too, meaning the section becomes a little bit less luck-based, and a lot more consistent. And because you can program Arduinos to do pretty much whatever, I'm almost positive you can modify an Arduino to register as a regular controller to accomplish what Six String Cal did by modifying a DualShock controller into a guitar, but without the heavy modding. I don't know this for certain, a lot of testing does need to happen, but if there's a way to make your guitar controller work as a DualShock controller and make it a lot easier to set up, then there could potentially be a lot more Trogdor NTSC FCs on Xbox 360. The strum limits that one mechanic that feels like there's a skill to it, but in reality, it's more than likely luck-based, because the human wrist has to be trained to strum accurately, and there's only so much room for human perfection. I've tried to workshop tools that could help me strum a lot more accurately and not use my wrist, because using your arm can make the strum limit a lot easier to deal with, because it's a lot easier to go up and down with your forearm than it is to go up and down with your wrist. I've tried to use paper towels, rough fabric, 
or anything that has an indent with it. I struck a bit of gold when I figured out rubber bands can have a pretty good grip on the strum bar. So I taped a bunch of paper towels together, wrapped a shitload of rubber bands on it, and used that to try an FC Trogdor on Guitar Hero 1. Unfortunately, I wasn't successful, but I was able to get a shit ton of Trogdor solo FCs. And hell, I was desperate enough to use fucking anything. I ended up using a silicone butt plug because it had this indent in it, which my thought process for this was because of the indent and because of how hard the silicone was, I was thinking I could grip it by its side and strum up and down with it, but unfortunately I had no luck. It's okay for fast drumming, but not really much else. But two days ago, I think I struck gold. Carpal tunnel hand wrists usually have a little metal bar inside, which will lock your wrist in place and rest on the bottom of your palm. But if you're wearing it while strumming and you want to strum accurately, you can move your palm up slightly and that pressure will lock your arm in place, making you use a lot less energy strumming up and down. And I had a theory a while back where using the top edge of your explorer and pushing it against your arm will flex that muscle in a way to make your wrist have a lot more stamina. But having a wrist guard that will do the same thing more consistently makes this FC a lot more possible. So since Arduino pulling makes 2E on NTSC a lot more fair, and it doesn't change the NTSC engine, it's just incredible. And the pulling doesn't mean you can't be inaccurate with your strums either. You still have to hit it like you're doing it on a stock guitar. My method for 2E is this. So right when I get to that last blue strum, I hit that blue strum as early as I can, and then try to hit that orange hopo as early as possible. This allows me to get more orange strums above the strike line, meaning if my hand stutters a little bit, I'm not gonna instantly miss. And as soon as I hit that blue, I start counting the downs in my head, and it's pretty fast too. I go by counting the fours so I can keep my accuracy, and it gives my brain something to focus on. So it goes like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four since there are 20 orange drums there. And since I know each transition ends on a down, I try to make sure I hit them just a tad bit earlier, just so the strum limit doesn't screw me over. Then at the very end, hit the last green, and then I do up down instead of using the hopo. But you can use the hopo, there's no difference there. It just feels more comfortable that way for me. I want to thank my buddy Pixel, otherwise known as Pixelholic, for making me this Arduino MechFred Explorer. He has an Etsy shop where he sells guitars as well, but they sell out fast, so make sure you're watching his Etsy account like a hawk. And when I say fast, I mean like, they're gone in like probably like 10 or 5 minutes. And he sells like 6 at a time. And if guitar modding is something that interests you, Pixel also has a YouTube channel on modifying Guitar Hero guitars. They're a great resource for anyone looking to get into guitar modding. He also makes them very entertaining. Definitely check my boy Pixel out, because without him and other guitar modders in the community, a lot of limits wouldn't be pushed. Because having good hardware can make a difference of an FC never happening to an FC being possible. And I truly want to thank all the guitar modders for making this game a lot more interesting. And a lot more fun too. But anyways guys, let's get on to this FC. Thank you for watching.
fucking god. Let's fucking go. Full solo 2 FC on Rock Band 1. On NTSC. Let's fucking go, dude. Holy fucking shit. It's 2022, we gotta think of some new methods. <laughs>